Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Matt, the EMF Minimalist. And I've done a couple videos already talking about dirty electricity, but this one is going to really cover everything that you need to know in order to avoid this toxic and poorly understood form of EMF. So dirty electricity, quite simply, is comprised of electric fields besides the predominant 50 or 60 hertz that are radiated by pretty much any alternating current wiring in varying degrees. Uh, not unlike the unpredictable levels of chemicals or mineral impurities that can be found in municipal water supplies. More specifically though, this electrical noise ranges from 100 hertz up through the kilohertz all the way into the megahertz range of frequencies. And because these EMF vibrations are more biologically harmful, it's critical that we understand and avoid their presence if we wish to remain healthy or regain our health. Dirty electricity, also referred to as transients, harmonics, voltage, microsurges, power line interference, electromagnetic interference, or simply EMI, are a modern problem with many modern causes. Uh, ballasted energy efficient lighting like fluorescent bulbs and LEDs, uh, dimmer switches, power supplies, like, like these two, and battery chargers really tend to be problematic. Ironically, many photovoltaic solar systems, which are promoted as being generators of so-called clean energy, are in fact some of the worst offenders when it comes to dirty electricity. So there are a few different ways to know how bad your dirty electricity problem is. The easiest way is with a portable analog AM radio, which you can tune to either the highest or lowest setting on the dial. And as you move this around your environment, you'll find the levels and type of static change depending on proximity to wiring and different electronics. The built-in keyboards of a laptop are a really good place to begin just to get an idea of what you're looking for. And this is also a really good way to demonstrate the benefit of using an external keyboard and mouse. You can also test a two-wire lamp cord, first plugged in, then unplugged, and then depending on which kind of bulb you have, you may or may not notice a difference when it's turned on. This is just a really rudimentary way to test for dirty electricity, and it's available to anyone with an extra 10 or 15 dollars. So to understand a little more accurately the levels of dirty electricity on your home's wiring, it's better to use one of a number of consumer level devices which actually plug into an outlet, including the Graham Stetzer meter. I have here the Alpha Labs EMI meter or the Green Wave broadband EMI meter. Any of these meters will work, but for this video, I'll be demonstrating with the line EMI meter. So upon plugging in the meter, you'll see two numbers. One shows the voltage or VAC, which I found to be pretty useless as it's often uh, off by a couple or three volts compared to what you would find using a good multimeter. 
The number you really want to pay attention to is the MV or millivolt levels, which on this particular meter I've seen as low as 12, and it can also go up to 1999 millivolts. So obviously lower is always better, but the goal is to hopefully have your levels below 60 millivolts, at least according to the manufacturer. This also jives with what I have tested and experienced personally. Um, you might be able to get away with 100 millivolts, but I think that you want to shoot for lower than that. So in testing dirty electricity, you want to learn two primary things. One is what levels are coming in from your power supplier or the grid. Number two is what effect do your electronics have on those levels. So first, to obtain the background levels arriving at your home from the grid, you want to locate an outlet near your electrical panel or breaker box Turn off all the other circuits, lights, and equipment, and plug in the meter. Also, because your power arrives on two legs, this single circuit only represents one of those legs, and it'll be necessary to test a different circuit on the other leg, which is typically one in the next row down from the previous circuit. In this case, I've had a second outlet installed right next to my panel and so I have two outlets, one powered by each leg. This is an ideal setup for testing and also for mitigating dirty electricity. As you can see, these are the levels on the first outlet and compare those to the levels on the second outlet. These are your background levels, which will certainly change over time. The next step is to turn each circuit back on one at a time and note any changes in levels so you can begin to understand how your use of power affects your dirty electricity levels. Uh, for now, you can just leave off any offending circuits until you figure out what device or appliance is causing the problem. You should also test lamps, light switches, and other electronics. For example, our blender and vacuum both generate dirty electricity, but neither is used for more than a minute or two at a time, so I'm not really concerned about that. The main thing to look for are things that may be left on for extended periods of time, like security lights, dimmer switches, or power supplies. Um, any bad light bulbs can be swapped out for incandescent or halogen bulbs. Dimmer switches can be pretty easily replaced with regular binary switches. And chargers and power supplies can be unplugged when not in use or controlled by a surge protector. Uh, just to mention, you may find that certain devices will actually reduce the levels when plugged in due to their built-in filtering abilities, while others may actually make things worse even when they're powered off. So after identifying and minimizing any of these dirty devices in your home, if background levels continue to be higher than 100 millivolts, there are a couple more things you can do to reduce your exposure to these harmful frequencies. So the best way to make a healthier electromagnetic environment in your home is actually to turn off circuits, which has multiple benefits. Not only are the dirty electricity fields eliminated on those circuits, but the AC or alternating current electric fields are also removed. And then if you happen to have any incorrect or faulty wiring, which can produce high magnetic fields, turning off circuits 
is really the simplest way to avoid them until you can get an electrician to repair them. So regardless of whether turning off circuits is feasible in your situation, the main solution to dirty electricity is actually installing special filters in your home. I would recommend using as few filters as possible since they will draw about 100 watts of power and because of that they can increase the magnetic fields. So preferably you can place these filters near the electrical panel where the fields are already high and dirty electricity coming in from the grid is going to be much more effectively filtered out. As you can see, I've installed two on each leg of our power and another two on a circuit that is always left on. And this ensures that our levels are always quite low, usually between 12 and 20 millivolts. But there may be some situations where filters are not effective and I've seen this with many grid-tied photovoltaic solar inverters. Even if the inverter belongs to a neighbor who shares a transformer. And in these cases, rather than installing lots of filters that may not help at all, it's really much better to focus on finding a cleaner inverter, talking to your neighbor about the problem, or simply turning off circuits in your home. In some of these extreme cases, it will be much easier and healthier to simply adjust your lifestyle to avoid using electricity as much as possible. You can also use battery powered LEDs for lighting or locate necessary items like fridges and freezers closer to the panel. It may also be possible to create a 12 or 24 volt direct current or DC system to supply some of your electrical needs, which has the benefit of not having any of these bad frequencies. By considering all of these issues and solutions, it's usually quite easy to avoid these biologically disruptive frequencies and minimize your risk of chronic health conditions like insomnia, anxiety, depression, diabetes, multiple sclerosis, among other neurological disorders. The main thing to remember is that our electricity today is not as clean as it once was. So it's really no surprise that most people a decade or two ago didn't have to worry as much about this. Just like the ever expanding proliferation of wireless technology, dirty electricity will continue to get worse and make more of us sick unless we do something about it. So I hope you found this video useful and hit the like and subscribe buttons. I try to respond to any questions or comments, so don't hesitate to share your thoughts down below. And until next time, take care and stay safe. Bye.